Welcome to CEO Insights. I'm Marilyn De Guzman with InvestingNews.com. I'm speaking with John Simpson, Executive Chairman of Fisher Resources, a uranium and gold-focused exploration and development company based in Western Australia. Good to have you, John. Good to be here, Mary. So let's talk about, you know, the first thing to talk about, I guess, your your company is currently, on, uh, you know, uh, IPO is currently underway. Could you talk about the highlights of that IPO and what you would like the investor community to know about that? Yeah, sure. Look, um, the IPO um, went public yesterday. Um, we had previously gone out to existing shareholders and, um, and high net worths, and um, we'd secured 90% of the funding that we're looking for. Um, so that's gone well. Yeah, um, the, the, the purpose of the IPO is to uh, raise funds, obviously to continue to target um, our uh, very prospective uh, uranium and gold projects in um, Western Australia and in, and in Argentina. Um, we're raising, as I said, t- uh, t- $10 million through the issue of 50 million fully paid shares at 20 cents Australian with um, a one or three free attaching option, or as in Canada, you'd use the term warrant. It's a, a 2027 warrant, and it has a strike price of 25 cents. <laughs> so as a company, one of your focuses is on uranium, and you know we, we all know what's, um, you know, the uranium market is seeing some tremendous growth opportunity. How are you capitalizing on this market growth and what role does Fisher Resources play in the dynamic? Yeah, look, as a group, we've been in and out of the uranium space for several decades. Um, you know, the um, markets are very strong, as you say, both for uranium and gold. And um, the projects that we, uh, we have within the group, uh, both in Western Australia and in Argentina, are projects that have been with us for um, uh, several decades, yep. Uh, at different periods, um, we have been uh, working these projects, continuing to work these projects up and driving them, you know, down the um, down the uh, 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 development path, yep. And um, look, we think the future for uranium and gold is very strong and, uh, and, and we are fortunate enough to be in that space and have been in that space for a long period of time. And, uh, and we're really just continuing to do what we've been doing in the past. Yep. And I think geopolitically speaking as well, uranium, you know, in addition to the prices, you know, going, you know, increasing, there's also the, the geopolitical factor to it where, you know, North American um, governments are looking for alternative resources for uranium, right? And that, you know. Absolutely. Look, I, I, I think, you know, we saw both China and Russia, uh, you know, politicize or militarize their, um, their particular, um, its particular commodities, you know, that they were supplying, whether they're rare earths um, or whether they were, uh, you know, gas into, into, um, into Western Europe. Um, I think that, um, uh, that that's created a, a, an enormous awareness, the need for diversity of supply, um, supply from, you know, much more friendly jurisdictions and, you know, um, uh, and, and, and and just ensuring the, the, the security of supply. I mean, I think it was a bit of a shock. Global, globalization, um, you know, had, had been the order of the day for the last few decades. I think that's changed dramatically. Being a, being a company that has, uh, you know, a critical metals and, and, and energy um, in, in locations like Australia and Argentina, um, if we can supply the quantities, the volume, and at uh, within the, uh, the, the, the the sort of first uh, autile of costs, um, you know, the, we, we're a very attractive supplier, or we will be a very attractive supplier to North American and Western European um, uh, utilities. And another commodity that's really, you know, doing well in the market right now is gold, which you're also focusing on. Could you talk about sort of the rationale behind, you know, you're focusing on both of these commodities instead of one or the other? Yeah. 
Yeah, look, we're, we're a group that have, um, uh, all of us have history in both uranium and gold. Um, we, uh, uh, when you're out, you know, pursuing opportunities um, like what we have, you invariably come across, um, uh, you know, uh, pro projects in, in both categories. And we just decided that we'd like to run them in parallel. And, um, uh, you know, and, and I've got to say that, you know, the gold project that we have here is, in my opinion, world class. And um, it, it looks a lot like um, Sierra Negro in Argentina, which is a, a very successful producer, some several hundred kilometers south of us. Um, in fact, our project people who uh, worked on that project in its, when it uh, was originated and uh, see what we've got here as being something very, very similar. And, um, you know, it's, it's I, I think, the future for gold and uranium are both bright and, um, and we're fortunate to, uh, to have uh, projects in, of both commodities in the company. So it's probably a good time to talk about some of the projects that you're focusing on. Could you give us a, some uh, overview and highlights of those priority projects and why those assets are uh, compelling projects? Yes, I, yes, I can. Um, look, we've got three project groups that we are currently exploring uh, in, in a bit extensively. The first of those is the Ashburton Uranium Project in Western Australia. It uh, is a project that's been with our group for several decades and um, and uh, parts of it are uh, w well advanced and other parts of it are highly prospective. We believe that it can um, deliver to us uh, over time um, uh, has the potential to deliver to us mineral deposits that uh, replicate the Pine Creechia syncline and possibly the Athabasca Basin. Yep, we've got 120 uh, square kilometres of prospects here and we have some 14 uh, prospect areas in those. Um, the, the lead one of those is the, um, is the uh, Angelo River project and that has uh, been drilled in the past by us and uh, we've identified high grade mineralization there and um, and our current program is is looking to take that um, take that data and we will twin those holes some of the high grade holes there in the in the program very shortly after um, IPO and then uh, we're going to step out to the northwest and uh, and look to to uh, follow that mineralization you know across the properties um, in the other parts of the of the project um, area, uh, we have, as I said, you know, uh, fourteen other prospects that we will be working up at a more early stage with, you know, um, with the shallower drilling and so forth. But um, you know, we we think it's a sort of world class project and will deliver to us ultimately, uh, you know, what we're looking for. The second big project group we have is called Serra Quadata, which is in the Chubut province of Argentina. This uh, it sits within a uh, uh, the San Jorge Basin there, in a in a very large uh, Cretaceous Paleo sandstone system, which is replicates you know what's in um, in uh, in um, Kazakhstan, and um, we've been working here for about a, on and off for about a decade, and we've been identified an area of about thirty kilometres by forty kilometres where there are. The, the numerous high-grade uranium uh, occurrences. Yep, we are uh, currently down there um, with uh, with auger drills doing shallow drilling, but the history of this area is that it, it there have been several mines uh, operated within these Cretaceous sandstone units, and they all started at surface, and they had you know uh, one of them was uh, operated uh, for several tens of millions of pounds in the 50s and 60s by the state nuclear regulatory group. And it, uh, it it delivered material that averaged about six thousand ppm. So it's it's a, a an area that has enormous scale potential scale. It's high grade and it, it it's relatively inexpensive to explore. And and if you you find the sort of uh, large scale ore bodies that we're looking for, um, it should be fairly fairly quick to development and um, and fairly uh, very inexpensive to develop. That's uh, that's that's a big attraction for that. Our third project group is also in the Chubut province of um, Argentina, 
and um, uh, and and it's a um, a major goal play um, called Sarah Check on. Um, it uh, consists of fourteen hydrothermal uh, systems that we've that we've identified on about three hundred and ten square kilometres of tenement holdings that we have. And by the way, we hold these things one hundred percent. All our projects are, are owned in the company, and uh, we've been focusing on two of those. Um, in particular, uh, um, the Sarah Check on project itself, where we have um, done systematic geochem chip sampling and followed up by IP surveys that have identified a, 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 a very uh, prospective gold project at that location. We're currently taking that 400 metres of, um, uh, uh, of anomalies and, and IP, and we're extending that out for about two kilometres with, with, the, with the idea that on completion and sometime within the next month to six weeks, we will put RC and diamond rigs on the property and we'll drill uh, on those uh, uh, IP anomalies. So lots of, lots of exciting news flow, lots of, um, uh, lots of excitement within the groups. We, you know, we, we're anticipating that, uh, that, that there'll be very strong news flow and, uh, and, and successful information coming out of these projects. And I must say, as a company that's, you know, just undergoing IPO right now, you've done a lot of, you've, you know, you've done a lot of progress in your projects. So what are the, the, some of the big catalysts that are, um, you know, that the investor community can, can watch for that's coming over the next, uh, short term? Yeah. Yeah. Look, look, just a little bit on, on what's happened in the past, you know, there's in, in, in today, in two two twenty four dollar terms, um, our group's been responsible for you know delivering ten to fourteen million dollars worth of exploration on these projects historically. Yep, uh, over the last uh, two two and a bit years, we've raised a further uh, four million from our existing shareholder base and uh, and 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 new investors, and we have put that money into the ground uh, on securing tenure and title and access and uh, at and and geological uh, programs um so we sort of come to an ipo with a much you know much more advanced state than his is normal and um uh, and there's good reason for that you know we we believe that you know shareholders want to put their money to things that that they will see you know drill results um uh, uh, you know a significant a significant Upgrading in the process of uh, of exploration, you know, at, at at all three of these projects, and um, you know, so there there'll be drilling results, there'll be geochem, there'll be you know radiometric uh, results coming off all three projects, um, you know, in the foreseeable future, and and only adding to the prospectivity we believe of those of all three of them. Right. Well, thanks again, John, for joining me today and sharing some of your company uh, developments. Yeah, look, thanks for having us, and uh, I hope it's informative. And as I said, you know, earlier, these projects are you know the some of the best potential uh, large scale, low cost operations uh, uh, or projects that that I've seen in you know the odd last thirty five forty years. So we're very excited as a group, and then. Um, Looking forward to to getting on with the job. Excellent. And thanks everyone for watching. Join us again next time for another edition of CEO Insights. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss future updates and interviews. See you next time.